In our English today, our learning objective is to explore persuasive techniques and our success criteria are to consider the impact persuasion has on the reader and find examples of persuasive features within the Day the Crayons Quit book. You will need to follow the link and re-watch the Day the Crayons Quit video as you will need to use all of the letters to help you with today's work. You need to think about how the crayons are persuasive by looking at what techniques and strategies are used within each letter to try and get Duncan to do something about the unfair treatment he is giving, and then figure out which crayon was the most persuasive and which was the least. Therefore, you may need to pause the video as you go through stopping at each letter to find the persuasive techniques within them. So, for example, we have firstly points with supporting examples or evidence. So this is beige crayon, for example, saying he only gets to colour in boring things such as wheat. And then he said, when was the last time a kid ever drew wheat? So he's backing up his points. He's, he's adding detail to what he's saying. We have rhetorical questions, which are questions that don't necessarily get answered, such as grey crayon saying, how about you give me a break once in a while? He's wanting Duncan to think, think about, oh yeah, maybe I should actually give him a break because grey crayon, I use him all the time. Hyperbole, which is just exaggeration. So for example, peach crayon saying, I don't have any clothes. I don't even have any underwear. So he's exaggerating his point. He's trying to make Duncan realise the unfair treatment that he is giving. Peach crayon. Emotive language. So this is just putting emotion into what they're saying. So for example, purple crayon saying, I'm going to completely lose it. And it shows that he's really mad and frustrated. Opinions. We have done a whole class lesson on opinions and facts, so you should be experts at opinions now. So, for example, red crayon saying he needs a break. Modal verbs and adverbs. So, for example, in yellow crayon's letter saying Duncan should tell orange crayon he is not the colour of the sun. So using the word should, that is a modal verb. Now, if you have forgotten what a modal verb is or an adverb of possibility, please see the following slide. Repetition. This is something being repeated over and over. So, for example, Grey Crayon has signed off his letter, your very tired friend, but also he's put in his letter that he needs a break and that his animals cover a lot of space, so he is used a lot. And then conjunctions, for example, Beige Crayon saying he is tired of being called light brown or dark tan because he goes on to explain his point. He's saying because using that conjunction in there. Here is a slide on what modal verbs and adverbs of possibility are, in case you have forgotten. And then as an extension, can you think of any other persuasive techniques that have been used throughout the book to persuade Duncan that he's given the crayons unfair treatment? And if you can, jot them down and then in our morning feedback session, we'll go over a few. Our brain break activity for this morning is to find a joke that you would like to share with the rest of the class to make us all laugh. And then we'll have a little giggle together at, in our morning feedback session. Please complete your daily practice for maths on a scrap piece of paper before starting your maths lesson today. In maths today, we are focusing on adding together whole numbers and it is our fluency lesson today. We are not doing any reasoning questions that comes tomorrow. So please watch the White Rose video to see a short maths input on how to do this accurately and then complete one of the maths worksheets I have provided for you. One worksheet is slightly easier than the other, so you will want to pick what challenges your maths ability the most. You will be completing these maths sheets as I have created. These are the ones that we would have been doing in school rather than the White Rose worksheet today. There is an extension on this slide also for you to complete. Please take a photograph of your work and send it to me via Microsoft Teams when you are finished. In geography this week, our learning objective is to create a mind map of a country along the equator, and I have chosen the country Brazil for us to do. Our success criteria are to know what continent Brazil lies in, have combined facts to create your mind map, and be able to describe what the climate is like in Brazil and explain why. Firstly, can you remember where the equator is or any other countries that lie along the equator? You will need to watch the link provided on this slide just to rejig your memories on what the equator is and everything to do with the equator. Please watch the video link provided as it gives you lots of different interesting facts about Brazil that will be useful to put into your mind map. I've taken a few screenshots of important parts of the video and put them on the following three slides to help you out.
So your geography task for today is to create a mind map of all the facts you have learnt or researched about Brazil. Use the images on this PowerPoint and video to help you. There is a, an example of a mind map on the top right of this PowerPoint slide. There are some suggested subheadings on the following slide to help you group together your facts for your mind map. As an extension, please research some interesting facts about a different country along the equator and see what similarities and differences you can find. As usual, take a photograph of your work and please send it to me via Microsoft Teams. Here are some suggested subheadings you may want to use for your mind map about Brazil. In PE this week, I would like you to first complete the PE quiz on this slide, which is based on all of the learning we have completed so far this term. And then on the following slide, take part in one of our Inspire Plus's fitness videos. You will recognise Sam Ruddock, the Paralympian Inspire Plus ambassador that leads some of our assemblies in school, and he is leading this session for you. Please complete the warm-up video, the fitness video called 202020, or another one of your choice afterwards, or Sam's leg session. And then to finish off, please complete the call down video. The link is on the PowerPoint and I will also pop it in the Microsoft Teams chat after. So the work that you need to hand in to me today via Microsoft Teams or email is your English worksheet, your maths worksheet and your geography mind map. The PE quiz we will go over in our afternoon feedback session.